Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Chris with Cowdog Craftworks and today I'm going to show you how to make the supercharged end table for the IG Builders Challenge. Now, I'm not really going to be using these plans. In fact, I'm going to do something pretty much completely different. Plans? This is what I think of your plans. Oh. I, I might actually need these. Um, sorry. So to get to here, we're going to have to start here by reclaiming some white oak skids I found at the steel yard and getting them split relatively straight with the track saw. These were rift sawn and holding a ton of tension so I went with multiple passes to break them down. Next I needed to square one face and one edge so I went to the table saw and set up the fence for some basic rips and checked for square. With that done, I brought the pieces to the lunchbox planer and used my flat face down to skip plane the rough surface, running all the pieces to even thickness about a 32nd of an inch at a time until everything was even. When that was done, I brought the pieces back to the table saw and ripped the last edge to get my stock squared and surfaced. I cross cut my nice hard stock for the legs to length with the miter gauge and then ran them on my taper jig to get a subtle taper for the insides of the table's legs. This is a simple taper jig with a ton of available plans and videos online, the concept being toggles mounted to a movable fence. Make sure during setup that your saw blade clears your toggles appropriately or you're gonna have a bad time. Using my marking gauge, I marked the depth for the mortise and tenon of the bridle joints that connect the legs to the carcass stretchers. I then used my tenon jig to make a cut on the stretcher before flipping it to ensure that my tenon was even and then used the miter gauge to cross cut the waist off. This was done on both ends of each stretcher. After marking the mortise on the leg using the tenon on the stretcher, I cleared out the waist in the mortise with the tenon jig again being sure to stay on the inside of my line and repeated it on all the legs. With that being done, I broke out the chisels and cleaned up the shoulders on the tenons, all the mortises, and worked it real good until I had a solid dry fit. Best tip for folks is to always work with sharp chisels to prevent tear or chip out. Instead of some fancy eco slash chili slash boat resin to stabilize the knots and cracks, I went with this big box store five minute epoxy and mixed it with black pigment. After cure, I used a block plane to take down the excess and then card scraped it flat. Spit on the finger for the reveal is optional. For the size of the carcass, I went with my table saw and a bevel jig, AKA a really tall fence, to resaw this five quarter stock since my bandsaw doesn't have that kind of capacity. Be sure to take small bites out of it by raising the blade just a touch on each pass. I was left with just a smidge of material in the middle, so I ran down that with a pull saw before planing off camera and then cross cutting to length. There's going to be two lower rails of sorts that will accept some stretcher strips for a shelf, and I'm bringing those together with dominoes. Here I'm just doing another quick dry fit to make sure everything is aligned properly since of course, I'm really making this up as I go along. Instead of a solid lower shelf, it's going to be slotted so here I'm cutting some strips to set that up and cross cutting them to identical length before taking the domino to those as well. And here I'm assembling them in super fast real time. I drink lots of coffee. Then I dominoed the top stretchers which connect the left and right leg assemblies to actually pin the bridle joint with the floating tenon. With that done, I went ahead and glued and clamped everything together, including those carcass panels, once again in hyperspeed, only to discover after assembly a pretty solid problem. For 
all the grief that I give plans and my use of plans, this is definitely a situation where having plans would have been very helpful. So let's review how I screwed up. As you can see in this crap drawing, the carcass ended up completely out of square and my end table is now knock kneed toward the lower shelf. Not a ton, but just plenty to be noticeable, about three or four degrees. Now what caused this was a design flaw where the top, front, and rear stretchers were measured to the length of the corresponding stretchers on the bottom shelf. The difference being that the bottom shelf is connected to thin stretchers flush with the outside of the leg, whereas the top is pinned into the inside of the leg. Therefore, once clamped together, the bottom is being brought in while the top is being pushed out. The fix then is to cut these stretchers where they meet the leg, trim them to the appropriate length, and then repin them into place with the domino to get us back to square. Back at it, I used the track saw and a small track as a chop saw to plunge the stretchers out, and then clamped it to my table saw surface with a right angle to get the correct measurement for the replacement. And after getting it back together, I sanded everything down to clean up all my surfaces and joints, and then card scraped the entire piece. To mount the full extension soft closed drawer slides, I had to add a little thickness to the carcass to clear the legs. So here I'm just sneaking up on the cut to make sure it snaps in perfectly. If you like what you see, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell below for notifications. For more daily content, follow me on Instagram, and for woodworking banter with friends, check out our podcast, Ask Me About My Wood, available on all major podcast platforms. For the drawer itself, I went with box joints to bring it all together. There's a lot of good box joint jig videos out there, with David Pacito and Steve Ramsey having a couple great ones of their own. The basic idea being an accurately measured stop block that the joint can hook onto in order to cut the next. I did this with a dado stack, but can also be done without, albeit with a very different style jig. The best advice I can give is to make sure your stock is square, flat, and even for best results. After the joints were done, I planed the panels with my smoothing plane before card scraping as well. I wanted to do a stop dado in each of the drawer sides to accept a bottom panel, so I whipped up this setup with a framing square, a straight edge, and hot glue before using a plunge router with an up spiral straight bit. The idea here is to find the location of the bottom and then set the fence up based on that, and then cleaned up the ends of the dados with a sharp chisel. Quarter inch plywood was cut down to size for the bottom panel on the table saw, and then the box was assembled. With a small cutoff, I used a hole saw and chamfer bit to create the tray for a wireless charger. The slot for the cord was cut on the table saw. I then mortised domino tenons into two sides of the charging tray. Then I switched to a wider mortise setting and hogged out two wider mortises into the carcass itself. The tenons won't be glued into the carcass so that the tray can be removable in case the charger ever needs to be changed. I'm going to be wrapping this end table in plate steel, so I'm adding a slight round over to the carcass as the inside corners of the steel will have a slight radius. I then went ahead and installed the full extension drawer slides, marking and pre-drilling everything ahead. And after about 20 minutes or so of adjusting and cussing and adjusting and cussing, it finally worked. I removed all the hardware to finish the carcass and made the Maloof-esque style finish of equal parts boiled linseed oil, pure tongue oil, and wipe on poly. Wiping it on generously and wiping it off to prevent runs and sags. After a few hours, I rubbed another generous coat on to ensure penetration before letting it dry for 24 hours. For the drawer front, I went with walnut because I'm feeling bougie, and selected this section with the knot to have some unique grain flow. I trimmed this entirely with the track saw before sanding and finishing and mounting with this brushed nickel pull. For the plate steel, I swung by and said hi to the steel yard lemur before walking away with a sheet of 14 gauge hot rolled plate steel. At my buddy PJ's shop, I cut it to size with a ferrous metal cutting blade and a circular saw and straight edge before setting up a fence of angle steel to score the bend points with a cutting disc on the angle grinder. Then, I brought in the muscle to help me cold bend the steel to a right angle around the fulcrum. As a fun fact, most steel yards will actually do this for you with a press brake, but we're doing this for the tubes. DIY fam. 
I used a bimetal hole saw at the charger mounting point to drill a hole through the plate steel and then used a flap disc to soften up all the edges. Back at my shop, I drilled and countersunk holes into the steel and the end table itself and off camera painted the screws black. Then I used stage two of my finish, boiled linseed oil, tongue oil, and beeswax to finish the plate steel as well as the rest of the piece inside and out. And with that, I am done. I am so satisfied with the look and feel of this build and was definitely challenged with the design and utilizing different materials, hardware, accessories, and joinery. While frustrating at times, it proved to be a fun and great learning experience. Thanks for watching and don't forget to join me next time here at Cowdog Craftworks.